Welcome Yamhill County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host, Howie Harkema, and our tagline is, And How We Doin'. <laughs> Today I have a very special guest. Um, it is Elise Ducart, who is MCM TV's Operations Assistant. A welcome, Elise. Thanks, Howie. It's nice to be here. It's wonderful to have you in this room, <laughs> actually sitting in a chair. Sitting in a chair on Ooh. the opposite side and with the lights on me. And you're not in the control room doing something. <laughs> I know, Amazing. right? Amazing. It's very bizarre. <laughs> I'm sure it's very strange for you. So when did you come to work for McMinnville Community Media TV? I came to work for MCM in June 2015. It's about two years and a month ago. So I've been here for a good, a good chunk of time. So, so what does an operations assistant do for MCM? Well, a lot of what I do is kind of take care of the calendar and keep the place running on the down low but on kind of weird little sub levels and do like um, a lot of graphic design related mm -hmm. things like I um, design all of the little slides that you see in between episodes of like there's a picnic happening and there's gonna be a play in the park and stuff like that so I do a lot of graphic design and I send out the newsletters everyone sign up for the newsletter I love the new and newsletter <laughs> thank you it's awesome it, it was a lot of fun to make very much a grid system happening and I had a lot of fun with it. So I do a lot of a lot of stuff like that and also go out on um, shoots with yeah. everyone. So I'm usually one of the camera people going out on the shoot and um, sing into the microphone much to everyone's dismay and I help out with editing. Sometimes I get sent on specific shoots. Like recently I went to shoot one of the um, library summer reading programs. Oh, I just. They had, yeah, at the... Um, Jenny Berg and Company. Yes, exactly. She's fabulous. She it, is fabulous. It was fabulous. a lot of fun to work with her. So I went and shot the um, science um, event that they had happening. And so it was oh, a lot of science. fun. Science, fire, and ice. So there <laughs> yeah. was, kids were very, very excited about the dry ice. That was a big hit. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Because it's so strange. It's so strange. And they kept getting really wigged out by what was happening, but then they couldn't keep themselves from running up to see what it was. And so... Very was, cold CO2. Very, yes. very cold. It's, a, it's a, com uh, like a solidified gas. Is yes, what it I certainly so it's is. Very exciting. <laughs> so you were already working in McMinnville when you came to work here. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your other job. I was. I was working, and still am actually, at uh, Chemeketa Community College Library, the Yamhill branch. So I work in, I work in the library over there. So right by the theater. Uh-huh. So you can sneak over there once in a while? I mean, it, it's nice and tempting. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that a couple of times where after work I'm just like, well, what's playing? I'm, better, I'm already over here. Yeah, yeah if it was a Star Wars something. movie, I'd be right over there. Exactly, yeah. I don't think I ever did that for the Star Wars movies. I don't think the timing was ever right. Yeah, I've I I've done understand. that for a couple of them. I did it for Wonder Woman recently. Wonder very Woman. Excited about that. Yes, Wonder Woman. So what job training background did you come for from to do this job? I was a film minor in uh, in college so I did a lot of um, I was mostly in um, the critical part of it so a lot of watching the movies and talking about what made it good and why I liked it and stuff like that so def definitely more on the critical side oh the but review side yeah, of it. yeah precisely so that was a lot of um, it's a different different side of things than the actual production so I got into the production a little bit later in college like as part of the same degree mm -hmm. um, where we made a couple of student films mm -hmm. so that was a whole lot of fun and I was a camera person on the mm. student films and uh, we, for one of our student films, like the best one that we made, uh, well, it was really the main one that we made, um, we were shooting in the woods. So it was a lot of me climbing trees and sitting in small holes. And I don't know how that really gives me a leg up as to working at MCM, but it was a lot of fun working on the production side of making a film. And so I did a lot of that. And in high school, going back even further, I uh, was the videographer for um, 
pretty much every sports team, I think, except for football. So I was very familiar with cameras and just a little bit with editing. I'd done a little bit of editing, and so. So AV anything. Pretty much AV anything. Elise is on it. Don't put her on camera. Overhead but she'll be projectors, it. all that stuff. <laughs> Overhead projectors, the smart board. Yeah. All, get get Elise for the AV tech stuff. Oh boy. You need recordings. I got you covered. You're you're a nerd <laughs> just like the rest of us. I mean, I think I fit it pretty well. <laughs> yeah, you do. So where did you attend high school? Um, at Weibo County High School in Weibo, Montana. And where is Weibo? Oh, it is about <laughs> seven miles from the border with North Dakota. And it's very, very, very small. It has about 600 people in it. So, like, just to give you an idea, my graduating class had 13 people in it. Oh, my. It's very small. <laughs> so, everybody knows everybody's exactly. business. Exactly. Everybody knows everybody's business, whether you want to or not, really. You well, hear about it. <laughs> there's only no 600 what. people. There's very little to talk about mm -hmm. about what's going yes, on. Yes, very true. But I, I loved it, and it's always fun to go back and visit because there are so many people still there that I, that I love and I miss. So after graduating at Weibo High School, mm -hmm. um, then you moved on to college and you went to another state. I did. I went to Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. Uh, so, which is a pretty small liberal arts college, so it was kind of a nice leap from such a small high school to then a comparatively small college. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I miss Concordia a whole lot. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> I miss it. Same latitude, different longitude. Yes, exactly. So it's pretty much <laughs> straight across North yeah. Dakota, just barely into Minnesota. So the there weather was pretty much the same. Yes. Cold, cold, cold winters, super hot summers. Oh, goodness. Just deal with it. It was so rare at Concordia that they'd, um, that they'd cancel school for any reason at all. Like only like once when there was a flood did they cancel school and maybe once or twice on a snow day because otherwise there was so much snow anyway. You wouldn't be going to school at all if you just had a snow day Got every it. day because there's like four feet of snow. <laughs> so what was your major in college? It was English literature, actually. And That's I, interesting. Yeah. I, it was great because I like the crossover between, like, reading and literature and learning about humanity that way and mm -hmm. learning about how literary criticism can be brought in so many different lenses and how, uh, like, tons of people can read the same book and come away with something different from it. They get they color it with their own experiences. And so I just love that aspect of it. And I love the crossover that it has with history and kind of comparing when this book was written, how does that come up in, I have an <laughs> alarm going off. <laughs> Turn off alarm. She had an alarm in her pants. <laughs> That's awful. That's okay. <laughs> I Doesn't forget where I was, but something it, with history probably. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and each person is so unique. It is individualized when you mm -hmm. do that type of study. Yeah, precisely. So then whenever I would write a paper, it would definitely be me coming at this specific work of literature. So, for example, um, like for my capstone paper, I did all of the works of Roald Dahl that I could find, so pretty much the children's mm -hmm. ones, and I came at them from a lens of how food is shown as power in the literature, and sure. so that was my argument in that, but it was mostly because I was so familiar with Roald Dahl and his works that I could just talk about it fluently for pages at a time, and so... She imagined you talking about anything right. fluently. Fluently? At least can't string together May sentence. I have another Someday place? <laughs> so what brought you to McMinnville, Oregon? Um, a job, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very romantic at all. Um, I have family in the area, mostly in the Tigard area and a little bit in the, uh, like in um, Vancouver, Washington. Oh, sure. So I was out here visiting them after college, not too long after college. And I just, I liked it out here. I, I liked the coast and I just liked the vibe and the people that I was meeting. And so I was like, oh. I'll just apply for a job out here and just kind of see what I can find. So I was hired at the college and I've just kind of, I've been here and I've really enjoyed it. I like the little 
in between hovering between Portland and the coast. Yes. I like that kind of sweet spot middle area where it's not too overwhelming in McMinnville. I really appreciate that. Well, we're really lucky because in McMinnville, we can be to the coast in an hour. We can be to the uh, mountains in an hour. Mm -hmm. We can be just about anywhere that we want to be in about yeah. an hour. Yeah. Precisely. So it's kind of it's it was kind of a sweet spot of all the middle things. So I really lucked out because I really just ended up here because this is the first place I got hired. But I ended up really really enjoying it, and I'm I I like it a lot. Well, it's wonderful that we've had you here for this long. So tell us about some of the many projects that you've been involved in since joining the MCM staff. Oh, I talked about those a little bit. I'll talk about. Uh, um, Hillside Adventures in Learning yeah. was kind of my pet project for for pretty much the whole two years that I was here, I think. Uh, Jerry put me on that, and, and it was so much fun, and I loved doing it. So it was, I was going out to um, Hillside, the retirement home, yes. when they would bring in speakers. And so I'd go and I'd shoot that, and I'd compile that if they had slides, and uh, shoot everyone like asking questions. And I really liked that because I liked interacting with the residents. Sure. Um, because they'd come up to me and ask, like, oh, when is this going to air? Oh, who even are you? What, what is going on? What are you and, doing here? Yeah, what are you doing here? And why are you <laughs> filming our thing? <laughs> and so I'd have to explain that, but they're so nice and so knowledgeable. Like yes. then they'd start talking about the the um, the lecture that they just had, and then so we'd have really great conversations about about what we liked about it and what we were going to take away from it. So I really enjoyed those. I liked um, recently shooting the graduation was yes. a lot of fun, um, partially because <laughs> I like um, I like seeing all of the hats, like like the decoration that yeah. everybody has on their mortar boards. Yeah, I always enjoy seeing the creativity there and it had been so long since I'd been to a graduation like I don't think I'd been to one since my college graduation so it was just kind of the excitement and everyone being like anticipation oh, the Anticip anticipation real life we get to throw coming. our hats up in the air soon it'll be great just keep waiting for it it'll be here so that was that was great and I really really enjoyed doing that that was kind of the last big production that I was a part of Ah, oh, geez. What about shooting with Andrew and his brother? Yes, thank you. I knew I'd forget something. I was shooting with Andrew and his brother. I'm the director for their show, for the Game Time Show. Game where they Time. Game Time with Andrew and others. Yes, <laughs> and, and so, many others. And sometimes. many others, and his rotating cast of characters. <laughs> and I uh, sometimes when you're watching that, you can hear me talking to them through the speaker. Yelling at you're them. Yelling at them and being, <laughs> oh, no choose Princess Peach. Why is no one playing as Princess Peach? That kind of thing. And, they, and the, so that's a lot of fun. I like carrying on the dialogues going on with those guys. And that's been, that's been really, really great. That's another one of my favorite projects that I've been working on. I'm glad you brought it up because I would have been kicking myself later. When I was I'm, I, I'm glad I, I brought it, it up too. I'm glad you did. So what's been your favorite part of working here at MCM so far? I've loved getting to know the community yes this is such a great way to get to know mcminnville because there's speaking of rotating cast of characters oh my, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> you meet so many interesting people working here um so like this is where i first ran into um i think people from the library and people from just kind of the downtown businesses sure. and even beyond that. It's just been great getting to know McMinnville and knowing what McMinnville is passionate about yes. by what shows they watch and what shows that they come here and produce. And I, I've enjoyed that a whole lot. And I like... I don't know. Just I love my I love hanging out with my coworkers. They're a whole lot of fun. They just make it. They make it. Oh, fun we're going to talk work. about these guys. We're going to talk about these guys, and it's <laughs> these yahoos. So one of the reasons that we're interviewing Elise today is, is that we're losing Elise. She's going to be doing her grad work in Texas, mm -hmm. and she's going to be leaving I around. Am the first week or so of August. Yes. And so talk to us about. Um, doing your grad work in Texas and where you're going to do it? I am going to Texas Tech University mm -hmm. to study museum science. Museum science? Yes. I didn't even get into this, all of my background <laughs> in museums, because we'll be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> I um, worked at 
a museum that's an entire town um, immediately, almost immediately after college. I worked there as an intern. It's in Virginia City, Montana. Mm -hmm. And the whole town is a ghost town because right. it was gold mining. It was the first capital of Montana. It's not anymore, of course, because there's like maybe a hundred year long residents there. But in the summer, it really picks up. So I was there during the summer and was uh, an intern working in the collections department specifically, but a lot of running around and just generally being a jack of all trades and a little bit of living history and all of that fun stuff. And I just loved it. I loved working with the artifacts. Yeah. I loved the cataloging process and learning about all of these items and finding a thing and being like, what, is, what even is this? Oh, it's a bustle. I didn't know that that's what a bustle looked like. Right. All of that How wonderful would you? stuff. How would you? It's under a million layers of clothing. Yes, putty coats and all that yes, stuff. Yes, exactly. So I just realized, I'm like, oh, I love this. I could do this for a living. And But for a while, I was just like, oh, but let's see. I still, I'm just out of college. I just kind of want to see what else maybe I'm interested in, what else I, I love. So I, of course, I ended up working at the library, and I love libraries. There's a lot of crossover there. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. I'll <laughs> Museums and libraries. I keep trying to skip Oh, that. my. <laughs> <laughs> Museums and libraries is where you'll find Elise, and also probably TV stations, anything that has to do with movies, anything that has so to do with... So why Texas Tech? I um, chose Texas Tech because I really liked their program. I liked that they had a focus on, like, specifically history-related museums, because, of course, museums can branch out oh into boy. natural history and art and everything like that. But I liked that they really they had a focus in, um, in history, which is, of course, my favorite thing. Your passion. And it's my passion. And um, I enjoyed that they have... Um, so many different museums even around the area yeah. that you can then intern at and and, and talk about that because you're going to be working mm -hmm. at a museum Yes, exactly. I'm going to be working at the on-campus museum there. Right. That's at, like an integrated part of their program. Is right. that if you choose to, you can work there part time as part of as part of the program. Which I'm like, yes, that's perfect because then you get the hands-on right. learning in addition to in-classroom learning, which is really invaluable in working in a museum. Like you can learn about it all you like, but so much of it is hands-on. Sure. It's best to to learn about it while you're there. So I'm very excited about that. So so what made you decide to go for your master's degree? I decided as I was kind of researching and feeling a little floaty, you know what I mean? Just kind of yeah, like that I've, been, there, that I've been kind of here, there, and everywhere and hadn't really decided what it was I wanted to do. That looking back on my experiences at Virginia City and volunteering at my hometown museum, that I'm like, so far, that has been that has been my passion. That's what I can see myself doing for a long, long period of time. So then after that, it was just kind of researching and bothering all of the museum workers that I knew and that I could find. And, and just see, seeing, okay, what would be a good program for what specifically I'm looking for? Would it be archives? Would it be specifically museum science? Would it be museology? So it was a lot of narrowing down what it was I really was interested in and then just going for it. So sending out applications, which I actually only ended up sending out two, but then I got accepted to both, so then it worked out okay. Gee, I can't imagine why. <laughs> I can't imagine Look at why. your enthusiasm, it's, ins <laughs> it's insane. So where do you see yourself in 10 years? I see myself, it's been, it's been a while since I've been home for any extended period right. of time. So I like to imagine I will have worked my way back to somewhere in Montana or in the Montana-related area eventually. You grew up on a ranch. Yes, I did. So talk about that. I grew up on a ranch. I grew up on a cattle ranch <laughs> in eastern Montana. Mm. Yes, so I'll many I'll bring you cows. something to step in later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'd appreciate it. I actually, <laughs> this is really weird, but I get really nostalgic when I, like, go by if there's a cattle ranch here, and I'm just like, it's, I smell cows. Yeah. There are the cows. They have a very distinct smell. Yes, they do. <laughs> They're very smelly. <laughs> but I love them so and uh, yeah so I grew up on a cattle ranch so that's um, I have a lot of weird specific cattle ranch knowledge but then not as much as I probably should so if I try to talk about it with someone else who's like super invested in it I'm like yeah that's a thing <laughs> that is 
So what has it been like to work with all of this testosterone-loaded men at <laughs> MCM? And do you think you've added a feminine touch to all of this? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not particularly feminine, so if I have, it's been accidental. <laughs> accidental feminism. It's been accidental <laughs> feminism. But I, I like to have, like, when we really get into a conversation, to kind of be like, well, have you thought about it this way kind of thing, and bring to it, like, what, what perspective I have specifically right. as a woman, which doesn't come up a whole lot because they're not super testosterone <laughs> I know. <laughs> and we'll talk about that next. <laughs> So that's been, it's been really, it's been fun, and it doesn't feel like I'm the only woman here, but of course, I'm sure I'm affecting things, and I don't even realize it. Well, staff-wise, so, you are the only woman yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, I am, but just for some reason, it doesn't feel like it. Like, I'm not really treated any differently. It's just, and here's Elise. Here she is again with all of her crazy ways. <laughs> but they all love you. <laughs> So how has it been working with the MCM Nerd Squad? Because uh, everybody that walks in these doors is electronically and camera-oriented mm -hmm. AV nerds, all of us. Yes, definitely. It was kind of a, a little bit of a mire at first because <laughs> everyone was way more familiar, and they still are really, way more familiar with all of the tech aspects Yeah, but you've learned a lot. I, I have. I've learned a lot. I learned a lot more about editing mm -hmm. being here, and that was fantastic because I could so kind of halfway edit stuff before mm -hmm. I got here on very dinky um, software processes, like the free ones that you can download. Yeah, like Adobe. Yeah, and exactly, like Adobe. And so I could... Even worse, Microsoft Filmmaker. And, oh, ugh. Oh, I Terrible think that stuff. I tried uh, that one before I did uh, Adobe, and it was disgusting. It was not fun to use. <laughs> but now you work with s such yes. technology. Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm trying to get at. Yes, exactly. And that's been great because, of course, before this, I'm using random camera equipment that, like, my school had, which isn't sure. necessarily the higher-end Right, it's not HD, it's not exactly. any of that. Exactly, so I can actually see how things are supposed to look and learn how things are supposed to sound and how to work a soundboard so that you get the best audio quality. Right. and what color makes, correction and yes. blah, blah, blah. So that's been great because it's stuff that I knew was good when I saw it. I just didn't realize how to make it that way. Right. And the guys here at MCM, oh. they know it. They know their stuff. They're so it's geniuses been at it. Wonderful learning from them and being like, here's what zebraing is, and that's why it's weird on your on the camera. And yeah. It's weird why is that so like that. fuzzy? <laughs> what makes why it like it, that? Why, why is it doing that? Why are that? the pixels so big? <laughs> <laughs> Why are the pixels so big? Why does everything look gross? But no, they, they know how to... Boy, do they know their technology. Boy, do they ever. Yes. So, do you think you will continue to create video projects in the future after you, your museum background? Mm-hmm. I think... I think I will. I think I'll find a way to do it. I'm sure you will. Yeah, because definitely in working in, like, say, exhibits, for example, if you want to do some kind of compilation film to go along with an exhibit that you sure. set up. Th and so you and a lot of people use flat screens mm -hmm. nowadays in museums to yeah. kind of show what it was like or what it. Mm hmm Exactly. So then I would I I would imagine I'd get my I'd get get some of my some of my experience here to get to jive out a little bit on that if I'm working on particular things like that or maybe even for fun I think I might incorporate a little bit of that a little bit of my filmmaking experience that I'm thinking here. that you ought to go out and do some archaeological um, uh, <laughs> stuff and and do a documentary because I I think you'd be great at that that would be so much fun I a love dig that or idea something. yeah yeah go film a dig and be like so tell me about this artifact tell me about why it's great so tell us about working with Final Cut so software editing program I've, we touched on this a little bit. It's, it's, it's lovely, especially compared to what I was using before. Yes. It's, uh, I it's really... It's not intuitive, though. No, no, <laughs> it's not. It's nice to have Phil there so I can grab him and be like, 
What's it doing? Why is it doing this to me? What, Where's where all my transitions? Where's all my transitions? Where did they go? What? Because it didn't. You update just did recently. the update. It just did an update. So I'm like, everything's lost. Everything. Where did it go? So it's it's a little bit fun in a weird treasure hunty way because a lot of the things that I edit together, it's a little bit more like a puzzle than anything else. Right. So a lot of my transitions are are pretty simple of just getting from one thing to another, and I don't have to right have to shift things around too much so I don't get too deep into it but it's it's interesting to learn on especially like knowing what I want a thing to look like just having to figure out how to make it do that which Final Cut can do you just got to find it that's right and <laughs> Phil's the master at finding it he is so he's very helpful when I can grab him when he's sitting right there so talking about libraries for a minute you are a reader extraordinaire <laughs> Talk about that. I try. I try. I, um, yeah, I read a whole lot. Of course, English literature major. It kind there of you go. The territory. So I get really deep into series a lot of the time. So I'm just like, yeah, all right, let's go. This is great. And then it's been like two days and I haven't done anything productive because I've been reading <laughs> that whole time. So it's, I, I love doing it. And I love talking to other people about it. And right. so, like, that usually involves me grabbing a friend and making them read the book that I just read so right. I have someone to talk to about it. And, uh, like, recently that was the, the Sandman series by Neil Gaiman, so that graphic novel series, because I borrowed them from my cousin. And so she had read them so I could just talk to her all right. the time about it and be like, and then when this happened, oh, my gosh. And she's <gasps> like, just wait. And I'm like, don't tell me that. So... <laughs> Don't ruin it for Don't me. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> so what has been your experience within this community? How have you felt about living here and I working here and loving here? And, and loving here and just meeting all a whole, so many friends. I, um, I Are you going to miss any of us? No, of course Scarecrow not. Scarecrow. I don't miss any of you. Scarecrow. Oh that, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to explain to people what like the UFO festival is and Absolutely. what's the deal with Turkey Rama and yeah. just <laughs> when those roll around I'm gonna just be like I wonder what's happening in Turkey Rama and I've and who's <laughs> gonna win the biggest turkey who's contest gonna win the biggest turkey contest and who's gonna have what's the gonna? best parade float? <laughs> <laughs> and will Walt and Linda be out front <laughs> How many wineries can I can I run around and find in a day? So many wineries. And I've enjoyed that and I've enjoyed getting to know the community, especially like among the MCM people and a little bit with the library sure. as well. Because I forget if that's a question that we have it here. Is. It oh, is. Oh, perfect. Library. I, <laughs> library. Talk about the library. I can talk about the library. I volunteer at the um, public library as well as work at Chemeketa because apparently I can't get enough libraries. Ev evidently not. <laughs> and the librarians over there are fantastic. I love every single one of them. When I walk in the door, they're really excitable and just love books and love reading. So they're really, they're great ones to talk about when I've been reading a series. I'll just be like, who's who's read this? I get who can, it. Who can talk to me about this? And <laughs> so I've I've been volunteering at the library, uh, maybe for about as long as I've been working here at MCM. I think that was around the same time that I started volunteering at the library. So I've been there for quite some time. And it's mostly with shelving, so just knowing shelving. Where anything to, to do with shelving? Yes, anything to do with Category. shelving. Put Categories. Me, I can figure out the Dewey Decimal System most of the time. Where do these DVDs go? <laughs> Exactly. What have people been checking out? I yeah. kind of like. I kind of like checking what's going on with that. What's oh, the so demographic on this one? Yeah. Where does this belong? Oh, okay. Or it goes in the kids section. Well, I mean. Okay. So I've got one last question. <laughs> oh, okay. So what brings your heart joy? I have. I have a weirdly specific one. That's okay. We talked to you about this. I love. When you can, when you can see the stars, like really, really see the stars without light pollution. Without any light pollution, I love, and I think that that's just kind of comes from being from such a rural area. Yes. That. Talk about that for a moment. I, okay. Where you lived and what you could see. Yeah, I could. On our ranch, which is about 15 miles outside of the nearest town, which of course is only 600 people. So right. It's, barely a blip and uh, you can when you sit out on the porch 
and our porch light is out and has been out for like five years. It's always going to be out. It's always going to be out because when you sit out on the porch, you can see everything. You can see the stars so, so well. You can see the Milky Way. You can see every little tiny minute right. detail in the sky. And I love it so much. And I've got my dog laying on me because she calmed down after I walked outside and isn't jumping on me anymore. Right. And it's just a wonderful feeling. And I, I miss that when I'm in more populated areas. I miss kind of the feeling of, okay, now I can calm down because the stars are out and all is well. <laughs> well, we're going to miss you extremely oh. here at MCM. You have been a wonderful, wonderful joy Yes, we filled person, <laughs> and um, we feel so lucky to have known you. Oh, and thank we hope you. you come back and visit us after you've finished your master's degree. I and, think I'll be back. Oh, I can't imagine <laughs> you not coming back to at least say hi. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you, Howie. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching today.